Morning, everyone. Um, thanks for joining. Um, it's been interesting a couple of talks so far. Um, really enjoyed them both personally. Um, I'm just going to go through uh, what we've been doing over the last year, really, with Solantra. So I didn't really want to do a product talk because we've done quite a lot of those. We did a digital presentation um, with the BPC Forum earlier on in this year. That was recorded, so that's on the BPCA YouTube channels. Um, and we've also got presentations on our YouTube channels and on our Real Results Farm that was circling in the break. So I didn't really want to do a product discussion. So what I want to do is go through some of the stuff that we've been doing. So let me just, there we go. So, yes, thank you for all of you that nominated and voted for Solantra um, as the Best Product Award. That was great, fantastic news that we found out about that a couple of weeks ago. Um, and we pick up our award um, at Pest Tech next week. So that's very exciting. So thank you for all of you that were involved in that, who voted. Um, we're really pleased about it. And the, the, the manufacturing site at Witness up in the north of England, they're really excited about it too. So all our rodenticides um, are developed and manufactured out of Witness, and, and that is our rodenticide basically capital for BSF. So all the cilantro in the world comes out of Witness. So it's, it's British made and British designed. So um, I don't know how many of you ever go to our website, but our website is really useful. It's got a lot of information. Um, there's a lot on there that you can go into. There's all sorts of stuff. It's been split into two different areas and you can have a look on there. There's products, there's news and events. Um, there's lots of bits and pieces in here. So if you go in there, you can pick up stuff. Um, case studies and things like that, you can find those there too. So if you've not read those, you can go in and have a look. Um, there's also obviously the, the product pages themselves that are there. Um, and if you go into those pages, there are download sections, the MSDS is there, the labels are there, there's literature in there as well. So that's the website. We've then got the Real Results Farm. So the Real Results Farm, we launched Solantra um, last November, so it's nearly, it's coming up to its first birthday. Um, we'll be celebrating that at Pest Tech to come and see us and celebrate. Um, and we put everything that we've done with Solantra on this platform. So this is a really interactive platform um, and, and we really love it. It's um, it's now being rolled out across other, other countries as well. So it's originally just a UK based thing. And I'm just going to go into it live now. So we are here. We're in the pest control section, which is this part of the farm, which and you can see the rats running around. And if we go in there, we've got lots on there. So the original launch webinar, which was done on the 25th of November last year, that's there. Um, so the full technical presentation that Sharon presented is in there. The presentation that I gave on the training platform is in there. The video from Hampshire with those 2,000 resistant rats that can be found in there. We've actually split it as well um, as three separate videos. So you can see that there. There's also a link to the training portal. Um, there's a product label, the statement on allergens, because we, we do get asked about the allergens, and that refers back to Graham's talk earlier. The, every question we have been asked about Solantra in the launch event and since has been added to this FAQ section. So if you have a, a query about Solantra, please first have a look on here and see if it's on here. There's lots of different questions on there about global brand, LD, um, 50 values, um, avian species, advantages against anticoagulants, lots of different things. So there's a lot in there. If the answer isn't in there, then you can contact us and I'll give you my details at the end and we will answer that. You can also find out about us through Twitter and on YouTube, but I'll go into that in a bit later. As I say, product literature, there's more to be added. There's also a link here to what we've designed, um, developed is the, the rat bait calculator. And I'm going to go through that as well this morning, um, just so that you can actually understand the cost benefits of using Slantra. And of course, just for a little bit of enjoyment factor, we've also got the Splat the Rat game. So if you've not been in and you've not played Whack the Rat, um, you can have a go in there and, and we give Amazon vouchers away. Um, each month to the highest score. So that's all good. So the, the 
fake cost calculator. This has been designed with a lot of information that we've had um, from lots of different trials, um, and we've put it in the background. So behind it, so this can be found. If, on the, if you go on the website, if you go to products and go to Solantra, and then if you just scroll down below this picture of Anthony, um, you can find the rat control cost calculator. Now, if you, there's two options. You can be a farmer, and this looks at the alternative food sources that are rations, or you can be a pest controller. So if you're a pest controller, you can change anything that is in red. So here you've got the cost of visit, per visit, and that is the true cost of a visit. So I was talking to some people last week, and I think there was only one person in the room that was able to tell me the true cost of a visit. So the operating cost before they go out to do a job. So that includes all the sorts of things like the wear and tear on your vehicle, the price of insurance, petrol, diesel, cost of equipment, cost of your training, um, your national insurance contributions, your pension contributions, your mobile phones. So the true running cost of your business is, is the cost per visit before you even do anything. Number of bait points. And then you can input here. So you can put in here anything you like. So if we put, we can click on Flacuma Fan. And if we just put in Storm here. So this is live. I'm doing this now. Um, and if I just put Diphenicum in here for a Diphenicum, um, say a whole wheat. Let's go for a generic. I can't use this screen now. Oh, I can't type. Um, and then just click on Diphenicum. So here we can put in the, the pack for prices. The end price is about 150. That's for an eight kilo. For Kuma Fern is about 35 for a three kilo. Uh, end user price is about 25.99 for a 10 kilo bag say of whole wheat and then you can see here it's automatically generated the total price per kilo of the product um it says euros but it is whatever you put in so this is all in in english pounds um number of bait points and then the bait point size so we know a bait point size for coli calcifero is um the five to seven so it's 140 there and we'll put 60 grams in here for human for storm and in here, we'll put in 200 for the whole wheat. So that tells you the initial bait placed in grams for that treatment for these 30 bait points. We then know how much we generally replenish those baits. So when we use um, cilantro, we replenish 10%. With store, it's 80%. And with whole wheat, it's 60 Then again, you've got the total um, amount of bait placed here. And you can see the total amount that's been laid. It's quite a big difference from four and a half kilos to nine and a half. And then the total cost of that bait that you paste. And so you can see here that whole wheat, as we expected, would be the cheapest because it's the cheapest to buy. But we do use a lot of it. We use 9.6 kilos of it. Now, the interesting thing is, is the number of visits. So with cilantro, we always talk about 727 in our baiting and that we will achieve control generally within as few as seven days. So that's usually three visits. So we'll work on three visits. Um, with storm, with lacuma fan, we pulse bait, and that's usually done in five visits. And when we um, surplus or saturation baits, about seven visits. So we can put in there the cost of the visit, which we put in the top here earlier, which is 50 pound. Some people might be more, some people might be less. And then you've got the total cost of the application. So that's your, and then you've got the total cost to the PCO. So you can see here that cilantro, the total cost to a PCO, this includes the, the application um, and the cost per visit is 236 pound. Um, Storm here is 287 and with your whole wheat it's 374. So the real, the real key thing from, from this calculator is you can demonstrate this to your customers. You can use it internally. You can put other products in here if you want to. There's, there's quite a lot of range here. You've got diphylone, diphacum, uh, chemotetral, clofaso, warfarin. So you can have a real good play around with it. You can look at the cost per visit and you can, you can play around with that. And we want you to use it as much as you can. And you can also enter here. You can save um, the name of what it is. So if you're doing, a, say, a survey or a quote for something, you can put those details in there. 
So that's the bait cost cal the rat control cost calculator. So that's there, uh, and that's as I say, that's on the website. So if you just go to the product section, go to Solantra, and then just scroll down past past Anthony and then down to here. And then there's some other bits down the bottom here about Solantra as well and our stockists. And then the training. Now, I would usually ask you for a show of hands for to see who's done the training. Um, I can't see you, so I can't ask that. I did think maybe I could do a little quiz, um, but I didn't know how interactive you would be. Um, we have got nearly 2,000 people in the UK that have gone through the Solantra training programme, which is fantastic, considering it was only launched last year. Globally, it's a global platform, um, and I think we're up to three and a half, nearly 4,000 people. So no matter where you are in the world, you can log into this um, and you can choose your language. And, um, and, it, and it's fantastic. We've had some great feedback. We've put a lot of time and effort into this. Um, some people have said that we're teaching them to cook eggs, but we've also got to remember that a lot of people haven't used this type of active ingredient before. It's a long time since I used it. Um, I started out in pest control in um, 1999. Um, so, yes. So it's, it's really to take people back to basics and to think about um, how they use products, what they use, and um, even things like rodent behavior, because we do forget it. You know, it's been a while. So that's in there. And if you have signed up for that um, and you've allowed us to contact you with marketing materials, then you will also receive these newsletters. So we send a newsletter out once every fortnight, no more than two a month. And there's different things in there. So here's a couple of examples for you. The last one that we've just done is um, win yourself. Um, we were giving away 10 buckets of cilantro and we'll announce the winners of those at um, Pestac next week. So we're giving away eight kilos. And you can see there that there's always some kind of competition that's being run. There's also um, case studies on there, related articles as to what you can, um, what's going on with cilantro. So we are on social media. We're on Twitter. We're on YouTube. And I'm on Facebook as Helen Hall with this image that you see. Um, on Twitter, um, we are bsf underscore pest.uk. And we, we, tweet most days on there um there's lots of different things you can follow us um there's a, there's a picture of martin belcher his head's been chopped off there i'm not sure, quite sure why but yeah we're on there we've got lots of different things going on have a follow um where you'll get the latest up-to-date things so two things sign up for marketing if you didn't sign up for marketing and you completed your training and you can contact me in an email saying you would like marketing materials um, and we can sign you up so you will receive those newsletters or you can follow us on Twitter. So that's good. And then the next thing I was going to say was we have this YouTube channel and there is so much on here. If you've ever got a, um, a small moment of time in you know while you're having lunch or in the evenings because there's not much other than EastEnders or Hollyoaks, then we have got so much, so so many videos on here. So we've got the Slantra case study which Sharon did down in Hampshire with those two thousand resistance rats uh, and control in eighteen days. We've got a Slantra introduction video that's really nice. Um, we've got our Goliath gel one here. We've got product Storm Ultra. So ridiculously, we launched Storm Ultra at the end of 2019. We went into lockdown in March. So we've had the launch of more or less two new products during the pandemic. Um, and some of you are still asking questions about Storm Ultra. And we have done a lot on Storm Ultra, but there's a lot of videos on there too. Um, and we'll, we'll be doing some more on Storm Ultra over the next six months or so. But it is, uh, it's, um, it's a wax-free block. Um, there's no wax in it at all, which gives it a really good um, palatability. Um, it's actually referred to as, um, as palatable as a soft block with the integrity of a hard block. So, yeah. Have a look at those if you've not had those. And then next, um, I've been on the road. 
Um, I've been on tour. I haven't got a green little car like that. Um, I've got a grey car, but I have been on tour and I've been going out meeting pest controllers that have struggled with the online learning. We've got a team of ambassadors that meet us at these events. They will talk to pest controllers. They'll discuss different situations where they've used cilantro. Um, and I also go through the online training. So if anybody's struggling with the online training, we've done it. Um, on tour, I've physically gone out, but we've also done some virtual sessions as well over um, platforms like Zoom. So if there's any of you that are struggling with the platforms and using it, because I've had to give people IT lessons with the online learning. You know, they, they have the cookies blocked. They don't. They have the pop-ups blocked um, and all different things. Or they're trying to do it on an iPhone. And yes, it, it does work on an iPhone and small screens, but it's not the easiest thing to do. You really do, if you can, do it on a bigger screen. So, yeah, we've been on tour. Our next one is in Reading on the 22nd of November. If you're interested in coming along to that and having a bacon roll um, and seeing myself, then please do drop me an email. And finally, we will be at Pest Tech next week, and we are really excited. Um, can't wait to be back out. We have done a couple of VPCA regionals, and they've been fantastic to see people. It was nice to be back in Belfast earlier on um, a couple of weeks ago, um, and we were over at Letchworth a couple of weeks ago as well. So it's really nice to be back in it and out. But yeah, really looking forward to Pest Tech. Um, it'll be Solantra's first birthday, so we'll be talking about that. Um, and we'll have games and competitions on the stand and then my contact details are there so is there any questions and have I overrun my time or have I gone too quickly Natalie? None of the above Helen I think a perfect amount of time because it leaves us for questions but I was going to ask one thing is it a conflict of interest if I win Smack the Rap? What, through the asking. online system? Yeah. I Is don't see how. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> would, would, would it be <laughs> seen as a... I if I did it. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting because in the first couple of months, there was about six people playing it. And so yeah. it used to just rotate between the six of them. Yeah. Uh, so they put yeah. quite a, a few bits. I'm, I'm sure there's some serious gamers out there that are playing it all the time. I, I can't get the Very competitive. Yeah. yeah, very competitive. So I don't like losing, just hashtag FYI. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm not a gamer. <laughs> no, no, no. Great stuff. I might have to go and have a little nose at it. Yeah, um, you mentioned Martin earlier in, in there, and he's got a uh, say a, a question on there regarding burrow baiting. So obviously the, yeah. the label doesn't have that on there yet, but is there a no. change? <laughs> no, so BSF made the decision not to apply for it. So we applied for indoors and outdoors. Um, we didn't include open areas or borough baiting in our dossier. Great. Um, there's a, I know your presentation wasn't based around this, but we, we yep. have got, you know, uh, sort of 15 minutes or so. Cone yep. calciferol, how does it work? Let's just have a little bit of an update, if that's all right. There's a but question no, on that. Um, so it's. Um, so curly calciferol basically causes hypercalcemia um, within within the blood, within the animals, um, when the rats eat it. And um, it causes deposits of calcium in the stomach. So we say 727 because basically what we want them to do is you put your seven blocks down, you go and feed on that on the first night. On the second day, you go back and you top that up. And then on the, on the seven days after that, you'll go back and there won't be any more taken. And what happens is you get a stop feeding effect um, because they've got these calcium stones in their stomachs and they've also got um, calcium that's come out of the blood and that's going to be in their tissues and it'll stop the movement. So because you get these waves within the hierarchy of the, the feeding, so you get the alpha or the dominant rats that will feed first, because they won't be able to move, 24 hours after eating it because of this stop feed effect, you then get the subdominants come out. So the time to death is five, six days, but it's that stop feeding effect, which is, a, which is the main thing because there's not many other products out there, but there's no other product other than using traps or something that is going to stop the rodents that quickly. So you'll, you'll, you won't see the rodents. And it's a very bizarre thing when you're using it. Um, and we've actually had people come to us and say they've used it, but they weren't quite sure whether it worked. Mm. So they've put down the bait that they usually use, like contract blocks or whole wheat. And when that, that's not been taken, they've realised it's worked. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. yeah. Yeah. I've had some great you know, members ring to say that, 
you know, problems they've had for years. And I, I know one of the particular situations uh, was a chicken farm and it'd been going on. I'd even gone and had a look with yeah. them, you know, before this um, uh, active ingredient come out and they had issues. Whereas, yeah, cilantro has certainly done a good job for them. The farmer's happy, they're happy, everybody's happy and they couldn't be. I uh, think because it's got a different mode of action, it's resistance busting. So we don't we don't have a true idea really of where resistance is in the UK. And I should have I should have maybe put that in there. Is that all I can say to everyone is please go to the crew website, download the information on collecting tail samples, because about tail samples, we do not have a map of resistance in the UK. We mm -hmm. know where historically where there's pockets of resistance, mm. but we don't know where resistance is now. And I'm hearing more and more of the stories that you're saying, Natalie. I was speaking to a, a chap last week. He was struggling. He's had a, a real bad rat infestation in an area and he's been treating it for years. He's no, and he basically, I think they were breeding faster than he could get control of them. So as he's knocking them out, they're still breeding. Um, and, and he's pulling his air out. He tries cilantro, got control within 10 days, couldn't believe it. And he said it was like someone had flicked a switch because he saw them and then he didn't see them. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I said to him, did you, did you have a tail sampling? He goes, I've never thought about tail sampling. Mm -hmm. So please, everybody, if you're sat there looking at a computer screen, next time you go out, start collecting some tail samples. The information's on the Think Wildlife website, the crew website, um, because without those tails, we don't have a map. Yes, there is a map. Um, which um, RAC have put up and is available online. But um, it, the data is only as good as what we put in there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it might say Yorkshire has got resistance, but it might only be one rat tail that was collected 10 years ago in Pocklington or somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know Yorkshire well. <laughs> Pocklington's the capital. And, um, <laughs> But um, yeah, if people that if people don't start testing, and the same in mice, you know, people are saying about resistance in mice now. We know there's resist; they've never been particularly good um, on bromodialone. It amazes me that people still use bromodialone in mice. But bromodialone, um, difenicum, and, and you know, we, we hear all different stories about different actives in different areas on top of the behavioural resistance that we have with mm -hmm. with mice in those areas anyway. So yeah, mm -hmm. you know, collect your tail samples, send them in. Um, it'd be really nice if we could do a poll on it maybe because I bet there's all, of, you know, out of all these people watching mm -hmm. this morning, how many have actually cut a tail off, put it in the freezer or put it in a jiffy envelope and mm -hmm. sent it off. Um, the unit has moved out of Reading now, but crew are supporting it and we're still you know, the the running a campaign at the moment, asking people mm. to collect those tails, because you know, from a from a product stewardship point of view, the way I see it is, we shouldn't be selling product into areas that we know we've got resistance. Yeah. Um, and as a pest controller, we shouldn't be using products in areas that we know we've got resistance. So having that one bucket in the back of the van isn't the answer for everything. Mm. You know, you they. Gone are the days where you used to have a stock sheet, and I've been there. The stock sheet came out. You ticked what you wanted off the stock sheet. You sent it in. Or actually, now there should be some more thought processes about postcode areas, regions, where you're treating. Is there no resistance in those areas? Should you be buying that bait? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and someone's asked, is cilantro safer than um, second generation? Oh, we've got a poll coming up. Oh, oh, there we go. We've got oh, a poll that's, for that's you. <laughs> That's that, really impressive. Yes, that was me, Helen. That was me. I don't, that was totally <laughs> me. It wasn't. <laughs> Here we go. We've got I don't some, even know uh, how one of these works. <laughs> honestly, that's a uh, hashtag quick, isn't it? So we've got, yeah. yeah. So have you sent in a tail for research before? And we are getting 84% no, 16% yeah. yes. Um, yeah, let's have a look. We're nearly there. Nearly to 100%. Let's end poll in five, four. Three, two, one. I'll end it now. Let's have a little look, share the results. Um, can you see those there? You, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so there see you go. There. 83, 84 people have said that, or 83% have said that they don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just seeing Oh, uh, Alan's just said, look, he's giving out tail resistant checking information on the crew stand next week at Pest Tech. Fabulous. Fabulous. So, so, if there's any links that we can put in the chat section as well, if Alan wanted to, or you, maybe a link yeah, to a. Yeah. Um, the, the information on but it, but the... it's, it's really important because until we do you know we're under pressure all the time with second generations as to 
and, and residues in the environment of, of rodenticides and we're getting under pressure for that. And mm. I think if we can all actively take apart, collect, even if it, you only collect one tail, it's one tail more than we've got now from your postcode area. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, Absolutely. yeah, I, I think Alan's giving out a little kit with a, the address and stuff on it. He, he'll be able to put it in the chat and ask that. So, but oh, yeah, good. I think I think it's really it's really important because, you know, we, we've got three products, really, three actives, got colecalciferol, alpha inside. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Alan, if you take a kit, please use it. Please use it. Yeah. So they, they cost money, don't they? They're, yeah, they're they do. a lot yeah. of investment. So, yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that can be where people, you know, purchase kits or, or not purchase them, but get them sent to them, I think, for free, is it? Is it free? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I know it's something that Barantine looked at doing a while ago, was giving out kits with orders and stuff. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know how much funding's there. It'd be something for maybe the crew directors to talk about later on this year, whether we put more money into the funding. Because, as I say, I think it's really important. We, we don't have a true understanding of resistance in the mm-hmm. UK. Mm-hmm. Um I don't even think many people talk about resistance because, so I, I, as I say, I've been in the industry since '99, and I know RAG exists. I don't know how often they meet. I don't really. I know they have a website as part of the BPCA website, but I'm not sure if pest controllers actually know. So maybe if we can put the links on there for yeah. the RAG uh, maps and stuff, so they can find them. Absolutely. Because I think we have to take responsibility for, for our own actions and it's going to, over the next 12 months or so, the government is watching. HSE is looking at what we're doing with rodenticides and we mm-hmm. don't want more restrictions. We don't want more sanctions on it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, we, in terms of that secondary poisoning point of view, someone's asked a question about cilantro and, and colecalciferol. Is it is it safer in term, you know, compared to second generations? We don't, we don't, we don't refer to anything as safe, for, and rodenticides aren't safe if it, you know they kill, they kill. Um, we did the studies on seven hundred and fifty ppm um, secondary poison studies, and in those studies we found there was no secondary toxicity in cats, dogs, and mal- mallards. So that's that. But the LD fifty, you know, there's there's no safe rodenticide. There's no safe trap. Um, we don't use the word safe there's a risk assessment to be done with everything there's an environmental risk assessment to be done with everything Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's why we've offered the training on cilantro and we've offered it for free so that people that are going in there Um, we've recently we used to have um, a on-farm record book we've updated that to this now so this is a rodent control book and it gives you everything you need to know it talks about um, different waves and, and cilantro and stuff so please, please you give these out um so whoever needs them we produced um 16 page leaflet leaflet booklets mm-hmm. these are available to be on the stand next week and there's lots of information in those as well so we're trying to educate as much as we can um we're, we're engaging as much as we can to to pass that information around so that people are aware um because cpd is going to become more and more important and the last thing we want is licensing. Yeah. Um, and I know I've run a couple of those interesting conversations for uh, BPCA forums um, in the regions when we've done those. Um, and it's a cost and it, it's not going to be the answer. Mm-hmm. You know, licensing pest controllers isn't going to be the answer. It's education, it's understanding, same with farmers and gamekeepers. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're all as guilty as the next person. There's none of us are perfect, mm. you know. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of shouting that goes on in the pest control industry, but we need to look at our own industry ourselves and actually say, are we as good as we think we are? Yeah. Because I think every, every one of us will have been on a site and seen someone else's work, or or heard of it on Facebook or wherever, and we're, we're not perfect ourselves. So we need to look at ourselves. We need to clean up our own mm-hmm. um, methods and, and processes. And mm-hmm. as I say tail sample yeah and all support each other that's that's yeah, important and that's isn't it, it, you know? it and, 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 and don't belittle someone if someone asks a question answer it exactly I'm a big fan of that you know there's no stupid question I mean obviously if I asked you what my name is that's silly <laughs> because I should know that um but yeah certainly when it comes to pest management there, there are yeah. no silly questions yeah and, and, and you know there's so much stuff out there for free as Alan Alan's saying you know um, tail sample is free it, it's it's funded by industry um we're doing online training 
the distributors do online training, embrace it. You know, mm. it, it's free training. If you're in any other industry, you pay for it. Mm-hmm. My husband is an estate agent. He pay, he'd pay £100 to come on a, a session like this today. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And he has to attend. If he doesn't attend, he can no longer operate, operate as an estate agent. So mm-hmm. we should be really grateful at how great this industry is um, mm-hmm. and, and not keep bashing ourselves because, yeah. we, you know, we've got this far without the government looking at us too closely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I'm, Andrea's just made a comment here saying that she's submitted a, a number of tail samples and it's yeah. been really beneficial to them, you know, contributing to the overall mm-hmm. picture. So, um, you know, can only encourage that more often. Yeah. And also Matthew's asked if you could also share the, bas- the link to the BASIF calculator and put yeah, it in the chat, in the chat that, section. Yeah. I'll put that in the chat. That'd be great. And then one, one more. We've still got a few minutes left. So, yeah. so this is all great. You say you finished <laughs> early. It, we've got lots of questions. It's not but- a whole conversation. Yeah, that's it. Um, Chris, just going back to when we were talking about yeah. the labels, and I know they're, you know, yeah. um, uh, tricky, tricky questions sometimes, but in terms of the um, deciding not to apply for open spaces and borough abating, you know, is there a reason why? Or It's not a reason I know the answer to. All I know is that it was a business decision not to apply for those. So mm-hmm. that'll be somebody far higher up than me. Yeah, good answer. <laughs> it's probably the cost of the it might have been to do with the cost of the data package I don't know yeah um yeah. because I think that's another thing that pest controllers don't really appreciate is the cost of getting these products so cilantro has taken 10 years to develop mm. um we thought we were going to have authorization back in 2017 2018 mm. and we got it last year so you know mm-hmm. things don't happen quickly in authorization processes is that the palatability um, as well? I've never heard that because the palatability had to be really high because you needed that feeding to happen in 24 yeah. hours. That was, a, that was a challenge as well, wasn't it? Um, to, due, due to the formulation, but I, I wasn't involved in that. That was, that was done many years ago, much before my time. Oh, yeah. um, and, that, and that's because of the active ingredient. You know, active ingredients have a bitter taste to them. And you're trying, and what you're trying to do is encourage that rat to eat enough in, in the one feed. So you're looking at them to eat that 10, 13 grams of cilantro in that one feed so they, they don't get bait shyness. The same with any other bait. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember, you'll probably know him, Ian Pepper said to me many years ago that alpha chlorolase, they never thought they'd get it into a formulated product because it was so bitter. He said, you, it's like, feeding Brussels sprouts to a child you have to drop it in chocolate and candy before they're going to eat it and that's basically what you have to do with some of these actives is to get such a a good quality sugar and fat rich formulation that they're going to eat it and to to disguise the the bitter taste of the other subject Mm -hmm. so um yeah. I, all I know, all I know is that um, there was a lot of to and fro between formulation chemist and lab to field and back again. Um, <laughs> it's an we've interesting process, between, and that's only from what people have told me. So, yeah, no, good stuff. Great. Well, that brings us perfectly to the end, Helen. And I really, really appreciate that. Some great questions there, and good discussions, and and, and a poll that was, you know, randomly yeah, created you. for us. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you, Lauren, or whoever it was that done that for us. Um, but thank you, Helen. Lovely to see you. I won't see you at Pest Tech because I'm away next week. Um, oh, but good I, I'll, I'll see you soon, I'm sure. And I'll put in the chat, I think Alan's already put in lots of stuff in the chat about um, tail sampling. So that's yep. great. Um, yep. Please do us on board. I didn't realise he was in the uh, participants, so that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, if you could pop <laughs> some links to your yeah, yep. calculators and, and stuff, that'd be great. I'll put the fake in there and the real results farm. Okay, thanks everyone. Uh, thanks, um, see you next week. Very excited. All bye. Right. See you, bye.